this is the Google Pixel, the first phone made by Google. Well, technically HTC made it, but Google are very much pushing this as their phone, which in many ways makes it the iPhone of Android. So the Pixel combines hardware and software made by Google. However, unlike old Nexus series of phones, the Pixel is a top spec flagship phone with a price to match. It has the same starting price as the iPhone 7 at £599 or $649 if you buy it outright. So what do you get for your money? Well, the Pixel sports a five inch display, the latest Snapdragon 821 processor, four gigabytes of RAM, 32 or 128 gigabytes of storage, a 12 megapixel camera, and I think the biggest selling point for most people, including myself, is the completely stock Android 7.1 Nougat software, which it comes with, and also the more advanced Google Assistant AI, which is the, this is the first phone to support. So the best thing about the Pixel, in my opinion, is there's no ugly third-party skin that's there to slow it down or add horrible looking icons to it. This is Android at its purest, and in my opinion, the best. So the Pixel has an impressive spec sheet, but is it any good? And if you're in the market for a new phone, is this the one you should buy? Well, first of all, build quality is fantastic. When you pick it up for the first time, you really do get a sense this is a premium smartphone, thanks to the anodized aluminium body and Gorilla Glass 4 protected display. It's really comfortable to hold too, thanks to the rounded corners, and the relatively small for 2016 five inch screen is perfect for one handed use. I must admit though, I'm not completely sold on this thing, the smooth plastic finish you have on the top third of the back of the phone, which I suppose does make it stand out and sets it apart from the competition or else it might look quite iPhone-y without that, but I actually think I would prefer the whole thing to be the same aluminium metal, I think that would look a little bit smarter. But whether you love or hate the style, I think one thing we can agree on is the bezels are quite chunky, especially as you've also got on-screen buttons. At 8.5mm thick, it's a little bit chunkier than the competition, and also unlike the Galaxy S7 or the iPhone 7, there's no waterproofing on the Pixel, so don't take it in the shower with you. The 5 inch display is one of the Pixel's highlights. It doesn't have the same ultra sharp quad HD resolution that the Galaxy S7 has or some other Android competition, but the 5 inch full HD screen uses an AMOLED panel. So like the S7, it has deep inky blacks, rich whites and vibrant colors. It really is one of the best screens on any phone out there and genuinely trades blows with the iPhone 7 and Galaxy S7. It's not quite as bright as the S7, but it's still good enough for using outside on a sunny day. But one thing I think I can promise you, you will won't notice is the lack of that Quad HD resolution either. Full HD is just fine at this five inch screen size. And if you do want a bigger, sharper screen, you can always go for the Pixel XL, which comes with a 5.5 inch Quad HD screen, but that'll set you back an extra 120 pounds or dollars more. The first time you use the Pixel, you'll be amazed how fast and responsive everything is. The combination of the Snapdragon 821 processor, the four gigs of RAM, and most importantly, the latest Android 7.1 software means everything is super responsive. Honestly, everything from swiping home screens, opening apps, and playing games is flawless. Now, I own the Galaxy S7 and use it as my daily driver, but as fast as this is, honestly, the real-world performance difference between the S7 and the Pixel is almost enough to make me jump ship. The S7 is blisteringly fast, but just when it comes to loading apps, this one occasionally slows down, it pauses sometimes. This one, it could just be because it's a newer phone, but it's also probably down to Android 7.1, which, the, of course, the S7 will get eventually. It just consistently is much faster. So the Google Pixel ships running the latest Android 7.1 Nougat software, which adds things like native support for fingerprint readers. Really, the rear fingerprint reader here is extremely fast and very, very reliable, uh, and also adds a range of other features and fixes. But as well as offering a stock Android experience, which is great, the Pixel is also the first phone to support the Daydream View VR headset, which is Google's version of the Galaxy Gear VR. But also more interestingly, it's the first phone to come with the new Google Assistant. Okay, Google. What can you do? Here are a couple of suggestions. You can say things like, who is Archimedes? Or, how far is the moon? Swipe to see more options. When Google unveiled the Pixel, a big chunk of the event was dedicated to showing off the new Google Assistant, which is basically a more advanced version of the Google Now Assistant we've been using on Android for a fair few years now. But to tell you the truth, I've barely used it. I have no doubt it's a super awesome advanced assistant and probably puts Apple's Siri and Microsoft's Cortana or even Amazon's Alexa to shame. But I just don't get much use out of it. As you heard, you can set alarms, ask it who Archimedes is and uh, check the time and things like that. And unless you have lots of smart home tech, uh, which you'd like to control through it, which you can, uh, or you're just a bit lazy to uh, type things into Google search, 
it's a cool feature, but I just don't really see uh, much use out of it in my everyday life. But of course, that's different for each person, and you, you may think it's a uh, fantastic selling point for it. And of course, Google's advancements in AI and machine learning is very exciting. So really, it comes down to how you use it. Uh, and it may be a big deal for you, but it wasn't so much for me. One of the most surprising things I found about the Pixel is how great the camera is. Google boasted when it launched it that the Pixel's camera scored an 89 on the DxO mark. That's the highest ever for a smartphone. While I take this rating with a pinch of salt, as I believe they aren't always that representative of real world camera quality, it turns out the Pixel's camera is incredible and could well be the best on any phone you can buy right now. On paper, the 12 megapixel camera, f2.0 aperture, laser autofocus, and dual LED flash isn't really anything to write home about. There's no fancy dual camera setup here, the aperture isn't as wide as the S7 or the iPhone 7, and there isn't even any OIS, optical image stabilization. Despite this though, the Pixel produces stunning photos and video. To my eye, the Pixel leans towards the iPhone 7 in terms of natural color reproduction compared to the Galaxy S7, which favors slightly unrealistic but more vibrant colors. Just look at this bar scene and the difference in color on the table. What's orange on the Pixel appears unnaturally yellow on the Galaxy. The Pixel produced stunningly detailed and rich pictures throughout with an impressive dynamic range, even in low light thanks to the HDR Plus mode, which I'd recommend keeping on all the time. Video is terrific too, especially in 4K, which looks sharp and has well-balanced colors. And what is the most surprising aspect is the lack of OIS, but in its place is something called Electronic Image Stabilization, or EIS, which actually does a better job. They're both impressively stable, and as you can see how much the cameras are moving by the dashboard coming in and out of frame. But the Pixel definitely looks smoother if you focus on the cars ahead, it's noticeably more stable. So it turns out EIS can actually be even better than OIS. The 8 megapixel front camera is good too, and like the rear camera, there's good detail and colors look natural. So it's a close call and perhaps a little controversial, but I think the Pixel has the best camera on any smartphone you can buy right now. So far then, I'm dead impressed with the Pixel, but what about battery life? The old Nexus phones never really offered any particularly good battery life, so how does the Pixel fare? Well, Actually, it's pretty great. After a full day of normal use, which includes quite a lot of web browsing and uh, checking my emails and so social networks and uh, playing the old game, I still have a good 45 to 50% of the 2770 milliamp hour battery left by 10 p.m. With 50% brightness, not too much gaming, and using the battery saver mode when it drops below 15%, you can definitely get two full days out of the Pixel, which is pretty much on par, I'd say, with the Galaxy S7 and iPhone 7 Plus in my experience, which is terrific. But the best part is, even if you are running low on juice, the USB Type-C port here supports fast charging, so you can get 7 hours of battery from just 15 minutes of charging, according to Google, and they're not wrong. This charge is really, really fast, which is handy if I need a quick top-up uh, before I go out in the evening, for example. And the final thing I want to mention is you get unlimited full-resolution backups of your photos and videos on the Google Cloud forever, so you can probably get away with going for the 32 gigabyte model, which I've got here, considering you can keep all your pictures and big 4K videos on the cloud. So let me sum up the Pixel. It's not quite perfect and it is very expensive, but I honestly think this is the best all round Android phone on the market right now. And I maintain this really is the iPhone of Android since it's so fast, responsive and easy to use. As a Galaxy S7 owner, I don't think it warrants an upgrade. I would miss the water resistance and slightly bigger screen, especially uh, as the Pixel's on-screen buttons also take up some space. The S7 is also £100 cheaper, which makes it better value for money. But I think if I had an older phone and I just wanted the best one right now, I would go for the Pixel. It just feels so much faster in the real world. Camera is terrific, battery life can last up to two days, and getting the latest Android software before anyone else, along with things like Google Assistant, is a real selling point. I highly recommend it, and you can check out links in the description below this video if you want to find out more or even buy one. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Let me know what you make of the Pixel in the comments below. If you enjoyed my review, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.